Tonight, we wanted to look at the outer part of the calendar. So last week, what we did is we looked at just the inner part, and we'll go back and cover that briefly. If you go to the Dead Sea Scroll calendar website, according to the scrolls, the calendar is a solar calendar, and it goes by the Takufas, which are the solstices and the equinoxes. And so just to kind of show you here, if we go the Wednesday closest to the equinox, which is March 20th, is New Year's. And so we would start with March 20th, and of course it's drifted back now to the 17th. So the idea is whenever the you're supposed to be in the week, wherever the equinox is. So for instance, we started March 17th. So at the end of this year, it goes March to March rather than January to December. So if we go down to the bottom, we have a leap week. We can see this down here. And so ADAR would end because you're doing a 360-day calendar, 12 times 30. So 30 days per month, 12 months, 360 days. And then each Takufa is outside the calendar months. So that's an extra four. That's 364 days per calendar year. And that's divisible by a week of seven days evenly into 52 weeks. So every year it starts over again. So New Year's is always on a Wednesday. Passover is always on Tuesday, the 14th of Nisan. So it always works that way. Otherwise, you get the Sabbaths off because you're supposed to take every seven days and, and rest and observe the Sabbath. And there's no way you can do that unless you do a leap week like that. The Gregorian calendar is more accurate when it comes to actually looking at the solstice, but we get our weeks messed up. Every year, the first New Year's is the first of January. It's always on a different day. So as you can see here, this time it would start if we let it go. This would be the Takufa, March 15th. The New Year's would be March 16th. And as you can see, that's four days away from the equinox, which is too far. So we add a leap week, and that puts it this Wednesday to be New Year's, which is only three days away from March 20th. And then, of course, this will keep creeping this way until we have the same situation again. It's once every five to six years we have a leap week. On the Gregorian calendar, once every four years we have a leap day, except every so often we ignore it and don't have a leap day, and that keeps everything pretty much in track. This is perpetual. You don't have to add any extra stuff. Whenever the Wednesday closest to the equinox, and you can see that by looking at an equinox, Stonehenge and all the, all the other Gilgals that are out there, you can always plot those out, or just a regular sundial. And so this is how this actually works. This year, then, we will add a leap week, and it'll make it the 23rd will be New Year's, and it'll start drifting back. So 23 minus 20 is only 3. So we're always supposed to be within three days of that Wednesday or that equinox. So this is how this works here. This is 2021, and it's the year 5946. Now next week, what we're going to do is we're going to go through some of the passages in the Seder Alam, which shows how they got the numbers off. Because if we go back to here, or back, or back to this one, you can see that the Pharisee date, which is the modern Jewish date, it's Tishrei 8, so they're a week ahead at this point, seven days, seven plus one is eight, but they have 5782, so that's 218 years away from the year 2000, where we're only 40 or 54. So it's actually 160 some years difference between 5946 and 5782. So how did we get this discrepancy? Why is one calendar one and one's the other? So we're going to talk about that. It was actually a set of people, specifically one rabbi named Yoshi, that wanted to get rid of any evidence about a Messiah coming. And they deliberately changed the prophecies and the timeline. That's the story in the Seder Olam. And we have that corroborated in several other things. So we'll talk about that next week. But basically... When you go here, the current year under the Gregorian style is what we're looking at here. You can go there and look at stuff. The Enoch calendar, Zadok clock, is what we're looking at here. And this is the full thing. And as you can see, it's Tekufa Tishrei, so it's the, the fall equinox. 
as counted on this. We're three days off, almost four, so that means we have a leap week coming up at the end of this year to put us back. So it's 5946, Takufa Tishrei. It's the fourth year of the seventh Shemitah of the ninth Jubilee of the twelfth Ona of the third age, according to their calendar. And that sounds confusing, but that's just like if we were to say New Year's, the day of creation, New Year's, okay? The very first week of creation. We would say it's the first day of the first week of the first month of the first year of the first Shemitah of the first Jubilee of the first Ona of the first age. So that's the way it would be written out, kind of like Roman numerals. It's easier just to say it's, it was the year one at that time and it was New Year's or it's 5946. So let's take a look at the outer rings and just kind of look at them. This is an explanation about the calendar. The inner rings we looked at last week and we'll revisit that toward the end. But the outer rings, just looking at this, basically this is the days and the months of a year. The smaller inner rings are all about years. And so what we have here, we start here at New Year's, and it's Nisan, and we have 12 months. And if you go count them, you'll see that the months each have 30 days. And in between certain months, like the last month and the first month, there is this one right here. It's not, it's a Takufa. It's not in Adar, and it's not in Nisan. It's between the months. And so just going through this, this is how it works. And you can come here at any time and look at it. Hopefully this helps. And I'll try to redo this sometime since we had 18 minutes of a glitch. But basically, the outer circles of the Dead Sea Scroll comprise, they're divided by months, weeks, and days. The year's made up of 12 months, consisting of 30 days in each month, no more, no less, exactly 30. That makes a 360-day year, calendar year, inside the months. But then the solstices and equinoxes are called tekufas. Tekufas are outside the months. And there are four, so that's, again, 360 plus the four is a 364-day year, which is divisible by seven 52 times, so everything's always even. But it drifts back, and if you let it continue to drift back, you'd eventually have summer in winter and fall and spring and that kind of thing. So every five to six years, just whenever the, the, the Wednesday closest to the equinox as it begins to drift back ends up being the next week then you add a leap week, and that keeps it uh, even. So in this first thing right here, what I want to show you is th these are the um, seasons of the year. So you've got spring, summer, fall, and winter. So starting up here, this is the Tekufa, the, the spring equinox, and you'll see it come around again when this is highlighted. It's the spring equinox, Tekufa Nisan. And then the next one is the summer solstice and the fall equinox. That's today, fall equinox. So this is Tekufa Tishrei. Actually, on our calendar tomorrow, but it's already tomorrow, Israeli standard time. And then you've got Tekufa Tevet, which is the beginning of winter. And then we get back to the spring. So these four cardinal points on their calendar are the, the start of spring, summer, fall, and winter, back to spring. We also have the mid-seasonal parts listed here. So if this is beginning of spring, beginning of summer, this is mid, mid-spring. And that's actually in the months, but we've got it set aside, kind of highlighted. And we'll, we'll explain why. And these are the, uh, the festivals. So you can look at this and see where you're at on the calendar and what day it is, how closest you are to the festival, and how everything works. So let's look at this then, and this is the explanation for the spring equinox, summer solstice, fall equinox, winter solstice, and they're called Tekufa Nisan, Tekufa Tammuz, Tekufa Tishrei, and Tekufa Tevet. It just means it's the Tekufa, the equinox solstice, right before this month, and so it's just called that, that month's name. And then we talk about the seasonal drift. Now here's how it works on the days. We don't go left to right or up to down. We go out to inner. So this outer ring is the first day of the week, the Lord's Day, Sunday. And yes, they had a Lord's Day back then. 
And then we have the second day of the week. Anciently, it was supposed to be just one through seven, we're told. But so this is the Lord's Day, and then here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the Sabbath, or the Saturday, the seventh day. And so that's the way this works. I think this is a good graphic to kind of help us understand this. I understand this is hard to understand at first, but just remember when we first became Christians and we're beginning to figure out stuff, we're reading the Gospels and it's Passover or preparation day of Passover. What is that? Well, it's the 14th of Nisan. What in the world is a Nisan? And we had to memorize the, the Jewish calendar at least a little bit to kind of figure out, well, it's, you know, crucifixion day. But it, there were prophecies throughout the year and that kind of stuff. So it's basically the same calendar system that's in the Bible. It's the exact same thing. The only difference is when does the year start? On the modern Jewish calendar, the spring equinox, it would be the first new moon closest to the spring equinox. So you're literally going to have the start of a month anywhere from two weeks behind it to two weeks ahead of it. Somewhere in there is going to be the new year. In this case, it's going to be literally three days behind it to three days above it. So it's only give or take three days instead of give or take two weeks. Okay, and so it's, it's a much cleaner, closer system to the equinox. So that's how the days work. So coming down here again, this is the, the months for the year, and they're all explained here, the, the days of the months and the fall and the seasons in each one. So you've got Nisan, Er, and Savan for the spring months. And that's between the Tikufa, Nisan, and Tekufa Tammuz. And then you've got the month of Tammuz, Av, and Elul. And this is not pagan, by the way. There's a specific reason why it's called Tammuz. Tammuz was the Sumerian name of Jared, Enoch's father. And it commemorates a certain thing that happened in history. So pagans just simply adopted it and started worshiping Jared as a divine being. That's always the case. Every time you find somebody worshiping Zeus, for instance, Zeus is just a guy that was a king about 200 years after the flood. He lived, he did some stuff, he was good and or bad. He died and was buried. We all know where his tomb is at. But the pagans start worshiping their ancestors. That's always the case. So we don't want to throw away the history. We don't want to throw, throw away the ancestors. But we don't want to worship them either. But so this is the summer solstice and this is the fall equinox. So this would be Tammuz, Av, and Elul. So those are the three months we just passed. And again, today is Tekufa Tishrei, or starting tonight, going down to tomorrow. Incidentally, there's this uh, debate on when does the day start. And the current Jewish calendar, of course, we all know starts in the evening. So right about now, sun's down. It's not midnight. We, we do, and if you think about it, it's kind of weird. The Roman way, which is the Gregorian calendar way, we start our new day at midnight, right in the middle of the darkness. It's not at a change like dusk or dawn, it's just in an oddball place, just midnight. So you know we're kind of off somehow. But there's a debate on whether the day starts at daybreak, at, when you first get up in the morning, when the sun rises, or when it sets. And it makes sense to, to my mind to do it in the morning. The morning is that way. But that's not how they did it. So we can go back to Genesis, for instance, where Genesis says it's the evening and the morning of the first day, the evening and the morning of the second day. And that's how we get the Jewish concept of the days starting in the evening. And it fits with creation week and the calendar also. But I just ran across a section in the Damascus covenant or Damascus document that was talking about it's very important for them as priests to observe the Sabbath properly. And it's got the do's and the don'ts, you know, for the Sabbath. But at the very beginning, it starts off saying that you observe the Sabbath by, number one, don't doing any work on the Sabbath. And so the question is, when does that start? So that tells us when the Sabbath starts. The Sabbath starts, they said, not on the seventh day of the week, but on the sixth day of the week at sunset, when the sun is its diameter is still seen. So in other words, like for instance, say this is the sun here, and a lot of, I'm not sure how we do it, but I think, if I remember correctly, 
when we're trying to figure out the equinox and stuff. Modern scientists would be like when this orb, the sun, touches the horizon. So the horizon would be right here. So let me see if I can do this, right? So when, when the sun hits the, the bottom, this is the horizon down here, and this is the sun. So at this point, we'd say, okay, it's the equinox. Other people say, no, when the sun actually sets, and you can just barely see the tip of it, like right there. So that's the, the setting. So they said, no, it's like when the sun is setting and the full diameter, which is the, the longest part horizontally, when, you, when it starts setting at the horizon and then it gets to right here, the biggest part it can still be seen but barely against the horizon, that would be the start of the new day or the equinox, that kind of thing. So we have confirmation then that the Essenes that had everything else right start at their Sabbath starts Friday night basically at sundown. And so that's an interesting thing. So again, so we've got, in this case, we've got the sixth festival, and this is today, Tekufa Tishrei, so it's the, the celebrated, calculated fall equinox. And when we do it, we do it, again, this is very, very specific. So when we get to here, the fall equinox should be, okay, and they have it the 15th of September, and it's always the 21st, so that would be here. So you can see it's almost a week off. Uh, so at this point, that's why next week, next at the end of this year, rather, we have a leap week. That'll run it up to here. So you'll see it's basically one off. So as a matter of fact, let's do this. So if we go to 22, 2022, and we go to Tishrei, we'll see that it's perfect. It's actually on the 21st, which is the equinox. That actually should be here. So it's just one day off at this point since it's been put back. And sometimes it is September 20th, September 20th or 22nd, we'll have to see. So it's you try to keep it as close to that as possible without getting too far away. Um, so that's how that works. So let's go back here. So again, Tishrei. So now we have the three months, Tishrei, Heshvan, and Kislev. And that gets us to Hanukkah and the new the uh, beginning of the next month or the next season so this would be the I mean, winter solstice so the beginning of winter this would be the first full day of winter and again those are always on wednesdays tikufas are always on tuesdays mid-seasonal things are always on sunday and this is interesting to me because remember this now when we talked about this last last week talking about the numbers According to Genesis, you can add these things up. Adam was 130 when Seth was born, and you go all the way up to, to Noah, and it says in his 600th year is when the flood occurred. So the flood occurred in the year 1656, which is 1,656 years after creation. But then it says it was in the, on the 17th of the second month. So if this is Tekufa, and this is the first, this is Wednesday, and this, and this is creation week, okay? So then 1,656 years later, we have a New Year's, and it's in the second month, so that's ER. So we get through Nissan and into ER, and if you start counting and you go 17 days, it comes up to here. So that's the mid-seasonal part. So it's interesting for me to look at this. This is New Year's. This is the mid-spring date which is a Sunday, and that was the date when the flood occurred. So it's really interesting to me. It's like it just wasn't a random date here somewhere. It was on a, number one, it was on a Sunday, first day, on the Lord's Day, rather, and mid-season. Now, I don't know if what that means necessarily, if there's more to it than just that, but it's really interesting to see those kind of patterns. So, okay, so this is how this works. So real briefly, again, we come up to here. This is the pattern, and these are the solstices and the equinoxes, these four, and then these mid-seasonal ones. And these are how the days work. It starts with Sunday, the Lord's Day, and goes inner to the Sabbath. And then we have the months and the days and how that works. And then that's mentioned there. 
And then here we have the yearly holy days. And this will go through and, and mark these. But Nisan, of course, we know on the 14th of Nisan is Passover. And then we've got unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, new wine, new oil. And let's just go through it. Here's unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, new wine, new oil, the wood offering week, and then it's New Year's, Rosh Hashanah, the Yamin Noraim between the two, and, and the Day of Atonement, the Feast of Tabernacles with the Great Day, and then we've got Hanukkah, and then this is Purim, and we get started over. So again, just looking at this, you can kind of see the year, how close you are to the festivals, and they just kind of line up. It's really interesting. And then, uh, of course, each one is mentioned when they are and what they are about, as much as we know. And then the leap week is the last piece of this. So in the leap week, we have this last week here, just like normal. And we have Tuesday through Monday is that last week. And when we have a leap week, it's split between the two. You can see this on the Dead Sea Scroll calendar itself. There's a place where it's marked the, the normal thing and it's got a, a little line through it. So it's either one or two weeks. So a non-leap week, both of these are counted, as you see on this graphic. And the last two, you have 23rd to the 30th of, of Adar, and then just Tuesday to Monday of the leap week. We don't have any names or anything for them. So that's how this works. So again, every five to six years, we have a leap week. So that's how that works. So if we come back to the top of this, let's go back to here. So again, we can see according to this right now, it is Tekufa Tishrei right here. That's one that's highlighted. So we're getting ready tomorrow. Well, tomorrow night then it would start Rosh Hashanah. Okay, and then it would go on and we've got Yom Kippur, we've got Tabernacles, Hanukkah, and this is the way this works. So right now it's not Elul and it's not Tishrei either. It's between the months. It's or as the scripture says, it's the head of the months, the, the Kodesh. So just to remind us of this, then how this works, this inner part is, this is the Jubilee year. And this is the Jubilee year itself, the 50th year of account. And you've got seven years into this Shemitah. And then this, you've got a second Shemitah, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. And in each Shemitah, there are seven years. So the way this works, this is the fourth year of the seventh Shemitah of the ninth Jubilee of the twelfth Ona. So what we're saying here is we're starting here. This is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth Shemitah of that Jubilee cycle. And we're in year number one, two, three, four. So you can see that it's the fourth year of that seventh Shemitah. The seventh Shemitah is not finished yet. We're in there. So that means we've had six Shemitahs complete plus four years. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around it the way it's written. But if you're reading the Book of Jubilees, for instance, that's what they'll do. It'll be the fourth year of the second week of the, of the uh, fifth Jubilee, you know, that kind of thing. And you got to stop and go, wait, am I in the, this is plus 50 or minus 50? You got to stop and think about it. So it's 5946. That's the easiest way to do it. And again, it's to Tufa Tishrei, and that's how that works. And then this is our Gregorian date. And so if you start here, again, for as far as the 500-year periods, creation starts the year, the, the first day of creation week. So this is, actually it starts here. So this is uh, New Year's, which is the fourth day of creation week when the sun, moon, and stars were created. And this is what they say in their text. So this is why the calendar starts here on when the day that the sun, moon, and stars were created. So we can start having a calendar. So this is the first one. It goes all the way around to the year. The year one then would be finished. We'd be in the second year, just starting the second year of the first Shemitah, of the first Jubilee. And that would start here on this count and go around. So with this one, these are the Unas, or the 500-year periods, and these are the Jubilees. There's 10 Jubilees of 50 years apiece, in each ona. So again, this is seven Shemitahs, or 49 years, and then the 50th year is a Jubilee count, and then it starts over. So each time we go through this, that's one tick here. 
So first Jubilee, second Jubilee, third Jubilee. And when you get to the 10th Jubilee, you've finished the first Ona. And that's basically how it works. And I know a lot of us are looking at it like, yeah, that's nice. Why would I care? It's just way too complicated. It's not really necessary for us to know, but if you're studying the prophecies and it talks about a certain thing, it's, it's easiest to figure out. Remember, and you can go back and, and look at this, when we did the study on the 11Q Melchizedek, or the 11Q13, it talks about the fact that the Messiah is God incarnate. He comes to die for our sins. That reconciles us to God and starts the age of grace. And then it begins to explain that that event where the Messiah does this, and we know that to be his death on the cross, that event occurs exactly one Shemitah after the end of the ninth jubilee of their age. Now, it doesn't say directly the eighth Una, but when you're talking about 500-year periods, it's pretty obvious it's not the last one or the next one. You can, within 500 years, the year 30 AD, give or take 250 years, so you know which, which Una we're in. And so when you look at this and you find out that the age ends in 75 AD minus a whole Jubilee is 25 AD, and we're just entering into that, no extra years, but one full Shemitah. So 25 plus 7 is 32. So they're saying that the Messiah died in 32 AD. Okay, give or take a year. I'm not trying to be super dogmatic with it, but that's the way their calendar works. So now that's nice, but when we say towards the end of time there'll be this Antichrist and there'll be this certain war and it'll be one Shemitah after whatever Jubilee of whatever age, we need to be able to figure it out. Some of that stuff is kind of important. So that's how this works. And let me just go back real quick. The inner rings, we'll just cover that real briefly. And again, this is the center part. And again, this is just a, a showing of the, the uh, 14 Unas. And the idea is that creation starts here. And by the time we get through all 14 of them, it's the new heavens and the new earth. 7,000 years of human history. And so again, we have down here the four ages. And it's each age is 2,000 years. Well, the first, second, third ages are. The last age is what we call a messi messianic kingdom or millennial reign. And that's only 1,000 years. And that's how they calculated and talked about it. So there's the age of creation, the age of Torah, and the age of grace. And then presumably what's going to happen is things just get messed up and time goes by. At the end of the age of creation, you have Abraham starting Israel. And through Israel, Messiah comes. So that's the age of teaching or Torah. And that's from Abraham right here down to when Messiah comes the first time to die of our sins. Now, it's not exactly on this, according to the scrolls. It's one Shemitah after the end of the ninth Jubilee of that particular age. So it's, you know, basically 40 years short. And during that 40 years, certain things happen. So this is when Jesus comes. And when Jesus comes, the, the Pentecost immediately thereafter starts the Age of Grace. And again, there's a discrepancy of 40 years, depending on how you calculate the age of grace, the age of Torah. So at this point, you have Jesus being here, right here. And then we go forward to the starting of the kingdom age. And we are in the next to the last Jubilee. And that doesn't mean that we have to wait 50 years for the rapture. The rapture is just some time before the tribulation. So these are the ages, and again, the, the concept here is the 14 onas, and as we go through them, we mention which age they're in, which ona they are, and then the year AM it was. And then you can convert this to BC. Then we have the Jubilee year, which is this one right here. This is just a graphic showing the Jubilee year. And then the Shemitahs. It's one Shemitah, second Shemitah, third. And so you can see, while well, going through this, the Shemitahs count one through seven, and these are the years. And then there's the 50th year, and then the Shemitah counts start all over again. So that's the Shemitahs in a Jubilee year. It helps because I remember some people saying that a Jubilee is 49 years, not 50. 
because the 50th year is the start of the next cycle and they kind of shorten it that way. So instead of two jubilees being a century, they would say two jubilees is 98 years and that's not quite right according to the Essenes and Enoch and all the other manuscripts. Uh, again, it may help us in our, our studies of prophecy and it may not, but either way, that's what they have. So, and this one is the Jubilee cycle. So in this case, we're talking about it's Shemitah number one and it's year one through seven. And then it's Shemitah number two and it's year one through seven. So that's how they count it. So, and that's why back at here, or whichever one it was, let's see here, let me just go to this again, there we go. And that's why here we have this whole count, because we've got a year, and that is one year, which would be one of these, and then Shemitahs and all that. So we're in year number four of Shemitah number seven, of Jubilee number nine, of Ona 12. So we haven't finished the 12th Ona, the 9th Jubilee, or the 7th Shemitah yet. And then here, this is just a brief history of how we did. These are the important dates and with the Jubilee year, so like in the whatever year, Shemitah, Jubilee, and Ona, the AM or BC date is given, and then we, we get it down to the month. And the reason why that's important is because Gregorian calendar starts January 1st and goes all the way around to December 31st. Well, in their calendar, it starts March, basically the Wednesday closest to March 20th. So it goes March to March. So as long as a date we're talking about is between March and December, or, you know, before January 1st, it's the same year. But if we're talking about a date that happened either in January, February, or the beginning of March, then according to this, it's already, well, the Gregorian calendar would have us already be in the next year. And in this calendar, we're still in that first year. So that's give or take a year every time you calculate something. So the thing is, when we know these were all in the spring or summer, it's in the same year. So there's no give or take a year. It's the exact year. So that helps us. So we get from the creation to the flood to Abraham to the covenant, to Exodus, to Solomon's temple being dedicated and then destroyed. And we've written about this in a lot of things, like in the calendar, uh, in ancient post-flood history. And there's a lot of, we have several videos on that too. So this gets us up and then the time Messiah dies would be 32 AD according to all this. And then we have the 111Q13 Dead Sea Scroll that tells us it was 32 AD. And again, plugs in all these dates too. And again, it's the 14th of Nisan. We know he died on Passover, right? Or the 15th, 14th or 15th, but either way, it's in the spring. So it's in that same year. It's not give or take a year. And we can calculate it on up. So that's how that works. And the one thing I did want to make sure to show you was when we go to the timeline studies, these are the inner calendars, but this is the intro page that tells us all this. And then we have the Una studies. This is the first 500 years of human history, which is from 3925 to 3426 BC. It's the first 10 jubilees of human history. And what we do is we have these in here. So like here's creation and here's Seth being born uh, when Adam was 130, you know. And so we have it here. These are the ranges. This is the first Shemitah, which is year one to seven, which is 3925 to 3919. BC and the second Shemitah and we get all the way down to the end of the seventh Shemitah and then that one year is is actually the Jubilee year it's the year 50 which would have been March of 3876 to March of 3875 so it's that year so we can figure that out and we just go on down so you can begin to see patterns sometimes the BC date doesn't tell you anything the AM date may or may not tell you anything, but when you begin to see that something similar happened and was it in the middle Shemitah or was it on a Jubilee year, all of a sudden you begin to see other patterns and that helps us with prophecy and with history and those kind of things. So we go on through all of these. So the, the uh, eighth Una, for instance, is when Messiah came the first time. So it's close to the year 4,000 
which is, you know, close to the year 75 AD. We know Jesus came in 32. Jubilee counts 71 to 80. And we have that kind of stuff here. These are the things that happened BC, uh, right before Jesus was born. And here's his birth, ministry, death, and other things like that. So there's a lot of things like that we can do. And we can plug in all these dates in here. And we, again, have the three calendars, basically, the ADBC mark, the AM mark, and the Jubilee calendar. So we can plug these in. And showing them all together, I think it'll be really helpful for us to figure things out. So here's the fourth one, for instance, Noah, Shem, Eber, Terah, and then Abraham, Tower of Babel falls, Abraham gets married, starts that kind of stuff. And so we have a lot of that kind of thing here. So the fifth one should be the Judges period, King David, all those kind of things. When we get up to the 12th Una, that's the important part because that's our 500-year period. So that's between 1576 and 2075, which is the 110th to 120th Jubilees. There should be 140 Jubilees in 7,000 years. So in here, remember, we're in the next to the last Jubilee of this Una getting ready to start the kingdom age, according to their calendar. So we don't have a whole lot in here in the beginning, but we've got Balfour Declaration, Israel becoming a state, coming back, the Golan annexed, Gaza, the Gaza War. And we can't get past 2021 because nothing's history yet. So this is where we are. We're in 2021, which is in the seventh Shemitah of the ninth Jubilee of the 12th Ona. And we have to finish this up about four years. And then we have another Jubilee period when the Age of Grace ends. So again, I'm not saying dogmatic like this is the year the second coming will occur or anything like that. Even if it is correct, we might be off on our calculations. But we're just trying to recreate the calendar as accurately as we can so that when we read something like Jubilees, we can instantly plug it in. When we go back to Matthew, seeing something Jesus did, or, or back to the Old Testament, seeing something Moses did, and it says it was a certain date, and then three days later something happened. Well, just going back to this whole thing, if it was a certain date, and then three days later something happened, you instantly know what day of the week it was. Was it a Sabbath? According to the, the Jewish calendar we have now, there's no way you would know because it varies so much. But this way, it's a, it's a beautiful system. You know exactly when things happen, how close they were to a festival. You just instantly know a lot of things. And again, there's a lot of studies we, we will do in the future based on these things. But that's our calendar. I just wanted to run that by you again. 